Yo, 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 yo. Ooh, you heard that, that echo? <laughs> Mic check. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Mic check. One, two, one, two. Guess we live, man. We good. I see that meter jumping. Man, we good. Peace to your family. How y'all doing, man? This is Brother Ross 228. Up in this thing, man. How y'all feeling? Glad I got your ear. I'm trying to make this quick, about a good quick 30 to 40, uh, you know, with the info, right? And uh, I ran across a few old videos, man. I, I, I wanna, I wanna, <laughs> I wanna put, I wanna, I wanna put it up. And uh, you know, and during this time, I ain't gonna even lie, man. I was a Pan African, but I knew of Indians because of uh, what's. Um, or tradition, right? So, um, let's see. We got also. Uh, we gonna get into a little, little, little science, I guess. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot, and and a little bit of archaeology. We gonna, uh, you know, do this thing right when we talk about the first Americans. We're gonna do it right, man. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna throw some science in there to kind of back our claim. How about that? All right. And uh, you know, I was reading a book. Uh, I think it was. Let's see, I got it right here over the side. Revealing America's Dark Skin Past Volume. You know, Red Superbox Thunderbird. Shout out to you. Um, you know, it's, just, it's talking about America's Dark Skin's Past. You know, so this was one of the uh, points that was brought out, uh, highlighting. Um, uh, I want to say anthropologist, right, by the name of Dr. Albert Goodyear. Dr. Albert Goodyear, like a Goodyear blimp. Okay. And um, before we get into that, I really want to get this video off. <laughs> It's quite funny, but you know what I'm saying? Two th I, I, this video is from 2013. 2013. How many years ago was that? Was it 2021? That was about eight years ago. Right? Like I said, I was a pan. I was, I was, you know what I'm saying? Like, everybody get off slave ships that's, that's quote unquote African American today. You know, that whole story that you learn in school, you know, and, you know, you just pretty much go along with it, man. You know, study, what, study what's been, you know, been taught, graduate, you know what I'm saying, and become, I don't know, a statistic. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know how you got to set up. You know how to give it up, but uh, yo, this this is a video from 2013 though, and I was actually like DJing a uh, like this indigenous. It was indigenous slash work. It was a like a power plant almost. Um. You know, I was for an opportunity to DJ that, you know, I was in that thing. 
get busy, make sure everybody, you know, have a good time, you know, and I know the importance of music. Man, we we gonna really get into this music thing. If you really know me, you know what I'm saying? I'm all about, you know what I'm saying, rhythm. Just this, you know, the beats, the drums, the eight oh weights. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the beat in the background, man. You know, the, 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 I made it beat so long ago, but hey, hey, it jam, hey, hey, it 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 jam. Uh, yeah. You know, let me go ahead and load this video up, and um, we're gonna get right into it. Got the mic. On. <laughs> Man, yo, look, look, look. Yeah, that's me. All right. Ask me. Got the mic going way over there. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, man, y'all know what we're about to get into, man. Uh, but, you know, it's like, yeah, this, this is uh, the reality, right? You know what I'm about to get into, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and play it. I'm gonna try not to stop it so much, but yeah, you, you heard the, uh, <laughs> you heard it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Check out that setup, though. Check out that setup, though. Ooh. <laughs> Check out that setup. Yeah, man. Hey, look that. You know, I ain't gonna even get into all that. But yes, 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 music. It's what we do. We've been doing this in my jeans, man. So, you know, my mama used to throw parties back in the back in the hood. So hey, you know what I'm saying? I I, I wanna have, you know, a good time. I want laughter. You know, I want nothing but good times, good vibes only. Shout out to the Kudo, cause I just slept out of it free. For you home, you know what I'm saying, but yeah, man, we uh we here we uh at at, at this event, I want to say we are um in Atmore, Alabama. If we're not in Atmore, we 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 we're, we're we're most definitely in Alabama. We in South Alabama somewhere. Um, uh, I can't think right off the top of my head, but I think we're dealing with the Atmore, you know, these Creek Indians. Uh, possibly, um, you know, my uh, on my paternal side, my as far as I know, you know, my uncle told me, you know, my my, my dad really don't <laughs> care too much for, him, but you know, that yeah, like, you know, he, you know, what I'm saying because he know, you know, when we talk about these quote unquote Indians, they look, they supposedly look. Like what y'all about to see. Right. And he said we have an uncle. Well, my uncle was telling me we have an ancestor uh on the reservation here in Atmore. Uh I think it's the Port Creek Port Creek, it might be Port Creek, Port Creek uh Indians in Atmore. The reservation it is in Atmore, Alabama. Um is where that ancestor uh came from. But that's neither here nor there. I like, <laughs> you know, I mention that every, every once in a while, but majority of the info that uh, you hear uh, mostly on my channel is like from a uh, Choctaw uh, perspective. Now, you actually look at the South East, man, it's really one big little chunk of land, you know, got different types, you know, may not be the same people, but they, you know, they, 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 Way, you know, uh, oh, 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 got the messages rolling. But let me get this video rolling so I get up. I told I wasn't gonna be here too too long, All right? So let's go on and get it. Oh, hey, oh, hey, 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 h
So I'm like, ooh, ain't got no socks on. <laughs> Oh, we got them motherfucking spares on. Oh, I ain't mean to uh, stop it right there. That's how I'm like, uh, I miss them spares. I don't even give some spares. I used to, that used to be how I rock. You know what I'm saying? A little jerk. But anyway, uh, yeah, man, we 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 hear. I, you know, I, I I hear him. I got I got. I don't know if he was teeth or not. When he was right there beside me, he wasn't beside me in that clip. But he's gonna. I just keep on talking. I know I keep stopping or whatever, trying to narrate this thing. But as you can see, I done left my station. I done left the booth to go see what's going on. I was choppy like that because I'm playing straight off my hard drive. It shouldn't be Trump. It should be straight in there. I might have to. I should, you know what? I should have been on my uh, on my Ethernet. That's why I should have had. That's my mistake. But anyway, we're gonna try to get through this. Hope you know it, it's straightened up, and uh, we're gonna keep rocking. And hope, hope, hopefully, we can get it clear to run smooth. <laughs> and that's why we call our grand entry. All right, so <laughs> yeah, uh, I got another clip too, man. I don't, I don't, I don't know what's up with that, man. Uh, I don't know what's up with that stream. Well, I, well, I know what it is. I just ain't on my Ethernet. I'm on a weak ass Wi-Fi. And and that's what it is. So I know. So I'm just gonna have to deal with it uh, to get this off. Let me see. Do that. We're gonna roll right into it. A brief history of this style of dance. Mm. This style of. Mm mm. Mm mm. I don't even want to present it like that. So allow me to skip that. We're gonna we're gonna play, we're gonna play the second half. And I got some more stuff I want uh more vids I wanted to play. We're gonna get to uh the info, but uh I guess I'm gonna play that on the next live. We're gonna continue that on the next live. Uh, my visit. Well, I only know if there was the reservation or not, you know what I'm saying? It could have been. I could have been on that reservation, but you know, I was pretty much uh hired, you know what I'm saying, to keep that thing live, to keep it lit. You know what I'm saying? Here, all the good vibes gone. That's what I was hired to do. Like, we hired a brother to do that, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna we're gonna uh because I wanted to come through clear. I know the audio might have been there, but I want the you know I want the visuals to be a one sock. All right. Y'all like everyone sauce? I do. Um, so what else we're gonna get right into it. Like I told you before, uh be reading the book. And uh let's get my ball. Right? Man, what's going on? What's going on? Let's get the temp. Yeah. 
All right, so let's share my screen. Boom. All right. So we was talking about. Let me throw this in the. Uh, throw this in the chat. I don't even got a chat. We're going put a comment in there. I'm gonna throw the source. That's where I'm gonna throw the sources at. Right there. In the boop, boop, boop. We get the other source of what I'm gonna be talking about. I wanna get them in there. Uh huh. We're gonna get to that. Boom. That should take you straight to what we got going on today. Okay. So, in. The book Revealing America's Dark Skin Past Volume 1 by Red Silver Fox Thunderbird. Thunderbird. I'm getting all of uh, I see it. I see it. Uh, some of the some of the uh, the scholarship come from other than Van Sertima. Um I, you know. The truth is the truth. I don't care who tell it. You feel me? I don't care who tell it. You know what I'm saying? So, in the, uh, am, I, am I doing full screen? No, I'm not. Let me get y'all that full screen. That should be full screen right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So, yeah, in the book, it was talking about the clothes, people, you know, describing what they, you know what I'm saying, who they uh, supposedly are, and when they came across the Baron Strait, you know, and uh, man, instead of just. Let me read it. Let me read it. I ain't got it up, but it's a book. You can hear it's a it's a book. It's a, it's it, and, um, man, I think I got off of Amazon. I don't know about twelve. Yeah. But you know, a screenshot or something. You know what I'm saying? What I'm reading, I send that to you as well. But I'm gonna also I'm gonna read it, man. Close. It's the, pretty much the first chapter. Um, ain't it, it kicking it right off talking about the Clovis people. We're not the first people of America. Right? Let me uh let me go um, from uh do, do, do. how do I how do I go uh, I'm just gonna go a little bit. How the American how, how America's got populated remains. I'm reading the book and much speculation. The theory, which has a stronghold in history books, is the migration theory that humans migrated out of Europe into Asia over the Barren Strait and down across into the Americas. Right? That's 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 point blank. Period. Textbook, that's what it is, according to the consensus, right? They come out of this school. All right, the, the migration would have taken place between 12,000 15,000 years ago after the last ice age melted the ice on the Bering Strait to expose the land for the humans to cross. That's basically the theory. The theory was developed in the 1700s and has basically remained unchanged. Okay, While I am unsure that many humans entered the Americas across the Bering Strait, this could not have been the only way humans entered the Americas. 
The problem with the Baron Strait theory is that as much archaeological evidence that humans existed in the Americas before the Ice Age ended. Your Clovis people who are considered to be the first humans in the Americas are said to have entered the Americas across the Bering Strait from Asia. However, current archaeological and biological evidence does not support if you archaeological and biological evidence does not support the assumptions of the Clovis migration theory of paleo and Indian migration routes. Uh, scientists studied the skulls, genetic patterns, and dental variation to verify the first entry of Mongolians, which are Asians, into Americas that only began after 3000 BC. The Clovis points that were found 94,000 years ago does not match the points found in Asia. Boom! The Clovis points that were found 9400, I'm going to say that dial, I'm going to put a dial on that one. 9400. <laughs> 9,000 years and 9,400 years ago in the U.S. does not match the points found in Asia, the land where they were said to originate. Okay, it would appear that Clovis technology was not an Asian import, it was invented here in the Americas. All right, so okay, they had to take the Mongols out the situation. Right. So, you know, I mean, however they is on on the reservations now is how they there. <laughs> the motherfuckers are there. All right. So, you know what I'm saying? It, it mentioned uh you know what I'm saying, Alan uh not Alan, but Dr. Albert Goodyear, right? So you know, when they when they start name dropping, you know what I'm saying, I wanna go look them up. So, you know what I'm saying? He you know, he pretty much the archaeologist, you know, that that doing the excavations and doing the the sciences. You know what I'm saying? Just putting the boots on the ground, getting out there, getting dirty, digging up this stuff, artifacts, and he has a say so about what he found. Right. So we're going to get into that. You know, this is uh, the first little first source. The first so that sounds sacred in the world. The, the S sound, right? But uh, I want to hear a beard on that S sound. I, mean, I know somebody out there can tear that out. Right. So November 8, 2004, kind of outdated 2004. I want to, you know what I'm saying, what, what's going on now, you know what I'm saying, with, with, with the story. But, you know, based off, you know, what I've read so far, man, you know, they got a, uh, the only way it is, is with science. So let's get into it. All right. Of course. You know, we talking, you know. <laughs> oh, man, you know, how, you know, if it's science, you know what I'm saying? They're going to be dealing with radiocarbon, right? They're going to be dealing with uranium. They're going to be dealing with all kind of testing uh, methodologies to try to come to some kind of conclusion to help paint whatever narrative they got. I understand that. But I got to say, you only can be science with science. So we, we're, we're trying to say the America's got the, the best science, and it might not be the sciences that that is out there. So we're coming with some new science. we updating their resume and saying, no, the band straight, no. The band straight didn't have it. We're going to say the band straight didn't have it. We're going to say it was an earlier migration before uh, you know what I'm saying then you know you know so the 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 uh because they here they here y'all they here they here you know and they 
they they right up there in Oklahoma song, you know what I'm saying, dispersed out, you know, uh night away or whatever, got the they, they, they here. So uh you gotta deal with that. All right. Where radio carbon tests and carbon out plants remains where artifacts were on the last made long the Savannah River in Annandale County by University of South Carolina archaeologist Dr. Albert Goodyear indicate that the sediments containing these artifacts are at least 50,000 years old, meaning the humans inhabited North America long before the last ice age. Okay, so. Yeah, to that. I post the uh, the link to the source. It's not really much there for you to read. Take you a few minutes, but you know what I'm saying. I've been on this thing. Uh, the yappy, the yappy, the yappy. You know what I'm talking about. You know, I ain't trying to last this. I ain't trying to draw it out. We're trying to get straight to it. So we gonna, we gonna, hey. As a, as a, there you go, Science Daily. All right, so we're gonna hop over uh, to the actual video that I wanted to, to uh, show, right? And this links directly up to the source, right? That we, we ain't just hearing it in the book. You free to hear it out of his own mouth. You feel it here at his own mouth. Let me make sure. Uh, make sure we're sharing. That. Okay, okay. Appreciate you tuning in, y'all. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, and uh, before we get into it, before we get into it, I most definitely want to shout out uh, my bro, Egg Newsom. I never. I bet I moved myself from the thing. I just gotta. That's what I meant to do right there. So uh, I'm gonna give a shout out to uh, my, my homie uh, Eric Newsom, man. What up? What up? What up? You know what I'm saying? Like what we got going, bro. You know what I'm saying? With with this uh, Pearl River project, and uh, you know the world need to know. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we gonna bring in the light, man. And this is the promo. Uh, for uh, what's to come. Actually, we got episode one already up there, and we got some more episodes coming um, in, in production. So, um, without further ado, let me introduce this video right quick of the Pearl River Project. Yo, DJ, cut the music. Welcome to the Pearl River Project. This is Eric Luce, along with Brother Lawrence. We are currently at Red Bluff. We are preparing to bring to you more scenes like this, show you something new about a place that's right up under your nose that many of us overlook. Super duper dope. Right? And um, you know, man, we, we we looking to build, man. Anybody want to build? Anybody, you know what I'm saying? We ready to hit the road. And I want to bring my family with me. You know what I'm saying? I want them to experience. You know what I'm saying? Everything. You know that I. You know, traveling the world, building. Of course, my tribe is with me. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, that's that's how we rocking, man. Uh. We go, we go, uh, y'all make sure y'all check that out, Pearl River Project. I got episode one on the channel. Subscribe, hit that notification bell, man, so you can get them, get them notifications when I get live. <coughs> Uh-oh, they're going round them. <laughs> Damn. <clears throat> So we about to get into uh, to what we was talking about uh, with Mister. Let's go back to it. 
Well, I ain't gonna say messed. I gotta correct that, man. Cause you put in that word, Doctor Albert Goodyear. All right. So again, the link should be in the chat soon. You come in, and I appreciate you. Uh, just go ahead and hit, get those sources where you can. You know, I don't know how YouTube, you know, do his thing, but you know, it's a little article, right? From Science Daily. All right, reputable source when you're talking scholarship, all right? And um, we're at the point now where uh, Dr. Uh, Goodyear is about to tell you, he about to, he about to take you to the spot as a primary source. Everything important got to have everything sacred got to have that you know what I'm saying you know what I'm talking about so uh let's let's, let's get into it make sure that's showing first yo DJ cut the music There are currently four principal sites that are being studied, including one in South America and three in the eastern United States. One of these is located on the Savannah River in Allendale County, South Carolina. Carolina in the bit. In 1998, archaeologists from the Institute of Archaeology and Anthropology at the University of South Carolina made a surprising discovery. Stone tools were found several feet below the surface, suggesting that Ice Age humans were present in South Carolina some three to four thousand years earlier than previously thought. See, hey, I want to ask a question. Do you believe? What's up on it could tell you about our past. How can you draw conclusions about what's up under your feet to dictate what's about to pass? That's a question I want to ask. You know? This discovery is expected to rewrite the textbooks of American archaeology. See, now this is what they're after. But still, after all thousands of years, that's still pretty. Pretty quality yeah, sure. yeah. See that? The Topper site is one of the three most important sites in the United States that is yielding evidence that ancient humans were here. See, they out there working, man. They, they out there working. They out there getting it. Hey, look at that. But, you know what I'm saying? We got, you know, other races, man. They just, you know, they sit back. They chilling. You know what I'm saying? You know, Googling. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I, I feel that. You know, I understand. You know, that's reality. So you got to deal with that. During the last ice age, for the past five years, yeah, scientists I mean, I, and archaeologists. Because we well, ain't going to say just black people. Since you see no black people out there, should black people have a voice and say so in that? What y'all think about that? We talk about primary evidence. They at the site they're with the bone, with the, the the artifacts. They digging it up. They doing their measurements. They doing their dating, quote unquote. They, you know what I'm saying? From leading universities, have worked with graduate students and volunteers, unraveling the mysteries of early man in North America. Well, we've known about the Topper site since 1981, when a local resident named David Topper showed us the site. At that time, we were looking for prehistoric chert quarries. Uh, chert's an impure form of flint that prehistoric peoples uh, highly prized for the making of their ancient tools. Uh, we had done a few digs here in, in recent years, in previous years, uh, but we'd always stopped at what we call the Clovis level, which is about three feet down. Uh, in 1998, though, the floods of the Savannah River made us move off the, the bottomlands where we normally like to work, and we were forced to come here. In the meantime, there had been discoveries made both in South America and the eastern seaboard that indicated that humans probably were in this hemisphere two or 3,000 years earlier. And at that time, I thought about the Topper site might be a great place to try to find 
uh, earlier implements deeper in the ground. So we did try to go deeper and sure enough, within a few days, we were finding artifacts that we'd never seen before, a full meter below the Clovis culture. Within days of this discovery, the story captured national and international media attention and heightened the controversy that surrounds the issue of when and how human beings first came into our hemisphere. Uh, 40. You got the exact depth? The Allendale Paleo Indian Expedition at the University of South Carolina is a long term. He said, You better get that right. You make sure you ain't cut no cones. Excavate evidence of the earliest humans. It is a cooperative effort with Clarion Corporation, owners of the Topper site. The focus has been on the chert quarries of Allendale County because they have historically yielded many stone tools. To do an excavation, we use a grid system that's very carefully laid out using a surveyor's transit and a metric tape. Uh, we wish to recover all the artifacts in a spatially controlled manner. We're particularly interested in how deep things are because the deeper in the ground you go, the older they are. So depth below ground. All right, so our, the deeper they are, the older they are. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. I I, I got somebody perfect that, that just, uh, gone, you know what I'm saying? But, hey, let's hear them out. Let's see Let's see what this science got to say about uh, ripping the other signs. It's time. Uh, the soils are carefully screened over wire mesh. Everything that uh, stays in the screen is recovered and bagged up separately. Depending on what we're digging uh, and, the, and the significance of it, we may- I remember doing this uh, at USM, and we had to take one of them classes, and, you know what I'm saying? Go dig and sift that stuff out, you know? We took a little trip. Yeah, man, shout out to USM, man, to the top. We use a shovel very carefully. Often we use a trowel, and sometimes we need to use the brush. One of the most important aspects of the Allendale Expedition is the role of volunteers who participate in virtually all aspects of the field and lab work. It would be impossible to carry out an excavation of this magnitude without volunteers doing much of the necessary work. Archaeological uh, digs are basically done in order uh, to control the location on a grid system. Then, then when one finds an artifact, one can measure the distance uh, from the north line and the east line, and then one measures down so that one can determine uh, the location in three dimensions where that object was found. The closer you are to the actual location of the original um, burial of the artifact, the better the tracing the better the provenance of the artifact. So that's one of the first. See, we learned that. Well, I learned that. Kind of, I don't think I learned that in high school. But that would, you know what I'm saying? If that's the case, you know, look look at what, you know what I'm saying? Besides the social part of it, you know, things that you can learn to other, your intellect, you know what I'm saying? Not just conjecture, just you know what I'm saying? Just talking, you know, get out there and do the work. So that's one thing I did learn in college is like, man, you know, we gotta get out. This this is the reason why they think the way they think, because they out there get they out there digging it up. First things they teach you. Point, let's try to get it in C2. Anything you find in that screen you put into a bag, which is bag with the number and all of that, it goes back up to the campsite, it gets washed, it gets put in the sun, you look at it again, and, and it gets bagged again and goes back to uh, University of South Carolina to be checked out one more time. I don't think, as you go down in the ground, you go back in time. There are really two stories of human history here at Topper. In the upper meter, or about the upper three, first three feet, there are artifacts from virtually every prehistoric South Carolina, all the way back to the Clovis culture 13,000 years ago. Just below that layer is an old red soil that the geologists think may have taken two to 4,000 years to form. 
This soil separates the Clovis culture above from the Ice Age pre-Clovis artifacts down below, which can be seen in the white soil. This white soil came in during the Ice Age when the Savannah River flooded this ancient terrace. These microlithic pre-Clovis tools are probably anywhere between 17,000 and 20,000 years old. This is based on a soil bedding technique. 17,000 years old. And you have Clovis at around about 9 to 12. Known as OSL. Included in the array of tools and stone artifacts found by Dr. Goodyear and his team are scrapers, probably used for processing animal skins, chisels or burins used for cutting, engraving wood and bone, knives, thin edged flakes for slicing soft materials, and chopping implements for heavy duty cutting. Oh, yeah, well, I was supposed to say fair use. Fair use, you know what I'm saying, for promotional use only. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> promotional use only. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. You know, education use only as well. These implements are typically found with clusters of fractured chert. These concentrations appear to be working areas where natural cobbles of chert were smashed and formed into tools. All the way across. That, that would be an outstanding spoke okay. shave. Yeah. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. And I you know, I think these things are are, are that's Doc. Good year in that thing. Right? You know, could be functioning, you know, as handheld cleavers and choppers. Mm -hmm. Good your boots on the ground. Mm -hmm. Jim. But when you when you see that many taken off in a row, you know someone has, yeah. has shaped that edge. That's good. I thought what because you know that's what I learned at Cali exactly, you know, how they teach it in, uh at that institute. I had my eye on that since yesterday. Okay, now yeah, I gotta get it back, right? In order to better understand how these ancient implements were made and used, some simple experiments were conducted. I thought we needed some help in understanding how these stone tools were created, so I contacted Steve Watts of the Shield Museum and Scott Jones of Prehistoric Media. They're experts in primitive technology. We found that it was relatively easy to crack open the chert boulders by smashing. This produced flakes that could be converted into the microlithic yeah, tools. Just hang it off of there, right? Yeah, I think that's what he had. Yeah. And the great thing about this sort of technology is that it's pretty it's pretty non-specific. We're producing big chunky cores and flakes here, but I think one of the end yeah. results of it not seeing any bumps of percussion. Yeah. One of the the neat things about this sort of technology is that while well, it's very simple in the execution, the end result with bend break burins and other types of tools, they are That's themselves true. relatively specialized. The most common pre-Clovis yeah, implement yeah, is a stone chisel made important. by snapping the edges to create a sharp tip. See, there your radial break. That's center. These Buren-like pieces can be handheld or hafted in simple handles. They are excellent for working wood and antler. Also, the large cobbles make simple but effective chopping implements, otherwise known as the topper chopper. Seeing the real artifacts from the site and, and then sort of reconciling those to the, the type of technology we're applying here, I'm very happy with the results in that we're producing materials that are very reasonably close to the uh, uh, the types of tools from the, the, the pre-Clovis levels of the site. Technologically, it's simple. Uh, we're, we're using basic, simple stone working techniques, but that says nothing about the culture. Simple tools uh, can perform very sophisticated tasks. And you need these tools for food, shelter, clothing, um, whatever else the people are doing. Okay. 
So that, that sort of explains the In color order to establish the existence of a pre Clovis site, not only sure must artifacts be found, but also they must be placed in their proper the geological dated. layers and dated. Those are called crenulated fractures. Top scientists from across the country have joined the team to help with the process of documentation. These scientists include Dr. Tom Stafford, nationally known expert on dating and stratigraphy, Stafford Laboratories, Boulder, Colorado. Dr. John Foss, soil scientist, University of Tennessee. Dr. Mike Waters, geoarchaeologist, Texas A&M University. And Dr. Stephen Foreman, geochronologist, University of Chicago. They are digging additional trenches near the main pit to conduct a more comprehensive investigation of the geology of Topper in order to study the evolution of the ancient landscape. The, the reason that we cut uh, trenches like this is to study the stratigraphy at the site, which is the layering of sediments and soils uh, you know, at the archaeological site here. And by doing that, you can place the archaeological material within its proper context and also get a history of how the landscape changed and what kind of landscape these people occupied. We're not quite sure, but approximately this horizon in here at the moment looks like it's about uh, about 13,000 calendar years old. With the artifacts. Right? With the artifacts. So this is Clovis, which is also 11,000 radiocarbon years. And then if it takes a couple, three, as John Foss said, a couple, three, four, form this, then, so this is 13,000 plus another couple, three, four. So let's say 13 plus three, so that's 16,000. So down in here, it might be 16,000, 20,000 years old. Usually by looking at the soil morphology and then uh, supplementing this with laboratory analysis like particle size and chemistry, uh, we're able to come pretty close to the general age of the soils. The exploration at Topper continues with careful study and analysis of the artifacts and geology. This includes the work of Dr. Doug Williams and his colleagues at the University of South Carolina Department of Geology and Coastal Carolina University who are reconstructing Dr. Doug Williams, probably check him out. The Ice Age Savannah River, its ancient climate and forests. <laughs> You know, there is mica in this. Mm hmm sure is. Right. So we, we can't... I don't remember what the, the importance of the mica, that mineral, you know what I'm saying, the, the term, we got to check into that mica. So and, maybe the rivers... And, and, you know, and the rivers. Right, this could be, you know, this could be 80,000, this could be 40,000. I think at this point, we have strong... Come on, man, you're going to be throwing up numbers out there like this. Yeah. Good, yeah. Hey, we got you though, bro. Long <laughs> archaeological evidence to show that people were at the Topper site during the Ice Age. This is based on solid geological analysis. We do have dates to support that. Mm -hmm. But Topper is not the end, it's the beginning. There are many more questions to be answered here. And we need to be moving out into the southeast and finding other examples of pre Clovis sites. <laughs> The heart and soul of the Allendale expedition lies in the volunteers who give both time and money. You see, when volunteers with the purpose, can we, black community, African American, Aboriginal, Indian, collaborate? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Can we come together? Not everybody just, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on. Is that not a beautiful thing? If not, then if you don't think that's a beautiful thing, race out of it. Like, yo, these people volunteering their time to unveil 
You know what I'm saying? New information. Partly still uh, 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 the same narrative, but in a different, w w with a different route, with a, with a twist to it. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> you know, we got to deal with it. <laughs> yeah. It's all about discovery and adventure. And so there's a mix of excitement, uh, the thrill of discovery mixed with the meticulous uh, detail that's necessary to be able to promise the. Let me go back. Could you, the question, could you infer? The deeper you dig down, the older it is. We ain't gonna talk about it today. I don't wanna bring big homie on. Uh, uh, Warfare K. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it was a. It was a man. The gems all up in there, man. But this, yeah, it's the, this is basically the ge geological uh, column, right? as how they explaining, you know, the, this process of how far you dig down, the older it gets, you know, and uh, we're going to talk about it, but you know what I'm saying? As of right now, you know what I'm saying? When we decide to fight science with science, we got to, you know what I'm saying? We're going to, we're going to, we're going to have to just deal with it. You know what I'm saying? That's all. I, let's deal with it. Put it on the table and let's deal with it. The meticulous uh, detail that's necessary to be able to provenance the artifact that you find. And there's so much to learn about how these tools were made. Al Goodyear attracts a, a good cross section of people. In the old and the young, this, that, and the other, from various areas and from different uh, areas of life and disciplines, if you will. And it's Hey, do y'all know where the black people digging, excavating, or want to have the. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I don't. I didn't. I didn't even, uh, I used to want to do anthropology. I, I like that class. You know what I'm saying? I want to do, it. but I just I didn't like the geography part of it. You know what I'm saying? Studying the class, studying the world, like countries and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Where's the historical site? Give me the directions. I can go there. I can do my thing. I don't gotta know where everything else is at. I was a type person, man. I mean, I changed my major like. Four or five times. That's gonna be a that's gonna be a bill too. You know what I'm saying? That college life, man, you know, it ain't for everybody. So uh yeah, let's keep running. So yeah, uh, a fun mixture. People who are not as old as I am, but you know, getting up in age, who are looking for something to do, you know, something different to do. And when I mention them that I'm doing archaeology, you know, they're Oh, I'll have to try that, you know. I was like, where is that you go, you know? It's in America, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's in Allendale, South Carolina. They'll come from the other states and they'll come and spend a week in Dig and go back and say, you know, what a great experience I had up there. It's wonderful. Um, last year when I participated on the Dig, I found a Taylor Point, which is about 10,000 years old. And it was so amazing. To just think that I was the first person in 10,000 years. <laughs> this is a really important site so that a lot of people all of that educational program that I have during the day uh, when I'm at work in Columbia. Ready to go. Let's you ready go. to go? You know. Yeah. That's how that's supposed to go. We'll be at boom. Yeah, man. You know, so the link is in the live. I, you know, I probably can uh, put it in the description as well. You know, I source up every time I try to speak. You know, y'all know where I'm coming from, and if I need correction, y'all can dive straight into it and point me in the right direction. You know, I'm no teacher at all but in trying to uh, uh trying to you know what i'm saying figure the whole tree out how it um it plays in the story of 
his story. Yeah. And uh, you know what I'm saying? You try to you try to make sense of it. That's all that's all we're trying to do. And while we're trying to make sense of it, we actually build. We actually uniting and, and becoming stronger because of numbers. You know what I'm saying? That you know, we ain't we ain't just sitting around. You know, it's a lot of things going uh, behind the scenes that I like from YouTube, you know what I'm saying? And, and as it should. And as you should, people come in and throw a monkey wrench and they're trying to mess everything up. But you got to be equipped to adapt because only the strong survive, right? That's, that's, that's natural selection. You don't even know it. <laughs> Oh, let me stop, man, because, you know, hey, it's, with me, it's all about the building, man. You know, the intellectual spar, you know, that all that's cool, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm here to learn something, too. You know, and I'm quite sure everybody else is trying to as well when they're apart. And, you know, I, I got something more to bring to the table than just a book, you know. I'm talking, you know, let's build books on the ground. Let's practice tribalism offline, right? You know, so you know, I got my, I got my people with me. You know what I'm saying? All my folk. You know what I'm saying? So make sure you do your genealogy, yo, and you know, find out who your people are. It's really important. You know, and uh, when we're doing this thing called nation building, get with your grandma, get with your great aunts, get with your, you know what I'm saying? Start with mom. Shit, before you get the grandma, you know what I'm saying? But hurry up and get the grandma. Hurry up and get the grandma before she get up out of here. I'm unfortunately, you know what I'm saying, I have so many questions to ask her. But like I said before, like, you know, I'm blessed to have my great aunts there to hold it down. You know what I'm saying? As the ancestors should. Mm-hmm. As they should. You know, and they gave me the power to do what I, you know what I'm saying? To try to make it make it clear uh, for my family, you know? And I'm just documenting that journey, you know? So, with that being said, man, uh, until next time, we're going to... Uh, we're going to most definitely get into that video I did the show. <laughs> When I was on uh, at that event, I might have been on the reservation. I didn't even know, but um, yeah, we're gonna get into that, man. But much love. Make sure y'all love. Gotta love. Love somebody. Love somebody. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you know, y'all be easy. All right, peace.